In a very, very profound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he says to his companions, there will come a day your enemies will soon gather one another to attack you like people gather one another to eat from their dish to share from their dish and they asked is it going to be because we're weak in number or or, or small in number and he says no you will not be small in number in fact you will be large in number but you will become like the froth on the ocean. You know, the, just those, those little, the bubbles, the froth, the scum that happens, that builds on top of the waves. It doesn't have any weight. It goes wherever the tide takes it. And he says that the fear will be taken out of the hearts of your enemies. And in your hearts will be put some, a disease, something called wahan. And he, they asked him, what is wahan? And he, he defined it as hubbid dunya wa karahiyatul maut. It is the love of dunya. Now the reason why this hadith is literally prophecy is because it describes the weakness that will come to our ummah. And he says the enemies will gather one another to attack you. And these attacks that we're seeing right now they're all different forms. In some places in the world, they're physical. And in some places, they are spiritual, mental, psychological. Islamophobia is a machine. These are the types of attacks that we are seeing right now. You know, it be, it's become cool. It's become com acceptable. In fact, it has become something that will give you political capital to attack Islam and Muslims. It has become an acceptable social capital type of bigotry. The Prophet ﷺ diagnosed this issue. He said, dunya wa karahiyatul maut. The love of dunya is a disease that's going to make us politically weak. That's what this hadith is saying. It's a disease, but what kind of disease is it? It's a spiritual disease. What is hubbid dunya? The love of this life. What does it mean to love dunya? What does it mean to love dunya? Does it mean that we're not allowed to have nice things? Does it mean we're not allowed to, to have jobs and get married and have nice houses? Of course we can. In fact, there were many companions who were extremely wealthy. But the problem is that the dunya has taken over our hearts. Hubbid dunya becomes a disease when you don't own your stuff, your stuff owns you. You don't own your money, your money owns you. You don't own your status, your status owns you. You don't own your power, your power owns you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, اعلموا انما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد know that the life of this world is play amusement you know what's very interesting about this ayah is when you break down this ayah when you break down this ayah from surah al hadid you find that this ayah is a is a chronological timeline of our life in this world, of the things that matter most to us in this world. Because when we first come into this life, what's the most important thing to us as a child? It's play. If you wanna get a present for a little child and you, spend a th and you drop a thousand dollars on a Armani suit, they're really not gonna care. But if you spend 50 cents on a rattle, they'll be happy. And this is because what matters most when you first come into this dunya is just, I want to play. Laib. I'lamu annama al hayati dunya laibun wa lahun. And then you get a little bit older and now you're kind of like in, in late elementary, middle school. And now the most important thing to you, anyone who has people in that age, any children in that age group, what's, what's their favorite thing to say? I'm bored. And the reason for that is because at that age, 
They want to be entertained, constantly stimulated and entertained. And that's because at that point, the most important thing to them is entertainment, amusement. This is called lahu in the Quran. And Allah says, after laib, He says lahu. Laibun wa lahun wa zina. Then you get a little bit older. And what is hubb dunya about when you're in high school? Well, pretty much it's about what you look like, what you're wearing. This is the time when people are so concerned about what they look like that this is when you see spikes in things like eating disorders because what you look like becomes of utmost importance. And so here Allah says zina. Zina is adornment, looking good. Now you get a little bit older. And now it's not so much about your rattles and your video games or even your brand names. Now it's about proving yourself. Now it's about how do I stack up next to someone else? What medical school are you getting into? How are your grades? And now it's tafakhurum baynakum. Now you're trying to show off. You're trying to compete. Then you get established. You get a big house, nice car, and children. And now what is it? وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Now it's about getting a lot or competing in the accumulation with regards to money and your children. But what's so interesting here is that Allah says all of this, all of this, He gives us an analogy. See, all of these are halal things. But these are the things we get caught up in. And each person is at a different stage in that dunya. But all of it, All of this stuff that we get so caught up in, it's like a heavy rain that makes the farmer super excited for a while. Because what happens, it brings vegetation. But then what happens to that vegetation? These things that we chase, what happens to it? It starts to crumble, becomes dry and yellow, and then it just becomes nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that the life of this world isn't meant to be chased. It isn't meant to be loved in that way. And when you take hubb dunya and you fill your heart with it, it actually causes all types of other spiritual diseases.